Welcome to the Local Small Business Coach Podcast, where we discuss everyday challenges local small business owners face and help to provide the information you need to increase your profits, boost your sales, improve your processes, and develop stronger teams. So if you're looking to take your local small business to the next level, let's dive in. Here's your coach, Tammy Adams. Hey, badass business owners. It is Thursday, so that means I'm going to jump into a question that I got from one of you. Yep, I've decided to keep the Thursdays alive with the questions of what would Tammy do? You may not call it that, (laughs) but I can only answer from what I would do if I was in your situation. So uh, my goal is, because I do get questions and I do encourage you to send me your questions as well, Uh, I get questions from the people that I talk with um, on a daily basis, the people I come in in contact with, I get them through the email. So I get a lot of different questions on business stuff. So what I'm going to continue to do is to keep up your questions on Thursdays. I really would love to hear from more of you. So once again, send that over to me at Tammy at Local Small Business Coach. Once again, Tammy at Local Small Business Coach dot com. And I will be glad to take your questions. And for today's question, I actually had to laugh, not at their situation, because it really, it sucks to be in their situation, but I just like the way that they signed off. So the question was this, hey, Tammy, I work with a bunch of teenagers and I need your help. These kids are driving me nuts. I know you said that you had an ice cream store, so I'm going to assume that you had to work with a lot of teenage help. All of the, oh, sorry, all these kids want to do is stand around play on their cell phones, chat with their friends who come by. How on earth did you handle it? I feel like a freaking babysitter. You know what? I completely feel you. It is so different working with teenagers than it is working with adults. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of adults out there that act like they're kids. And then there's also kids that act like adults. And it's uh, it can be very frustrating. But in a lot of cases, there are certain businesses where you have a bunch of teenagers. And here's the thing that I've learned. If you put a teenager in with a bunch of adults, they tend to act more adulty. If you get a bunch of teenagers around each other, they're going to act more like teenagers. So, uh, and I think back because I go, man, was I ever like this? Was was I one of these teenagers that are a pain in the keister? And because my first job was with Taco Bell. So obviously there was a lot of kids there. And uh, I think I kind of lucked out because one that's never been in my nature, but I also had a couple of very mature teenagers that I worked with. So I think it kind of helped pull me more towards that than it was the other way. But teenagers are definitely a breed of their own. And, you know, with today's technology, it's made it even more challenging. Uh, when you go back in time, you know, most people were groomed to be for their first job. They were told what they needed to do, how they needed to act. They came into the workplace with a lot more training. They went through some sessions with school. Uh, Their parents told them what they needed to do. And I think the problem we have today is you have technology that's in their hands. You know, it's the same thing that teachers have to experience with these cell phones being around. Uh, If their friends discover that they've got a job, especially one that uh, has food or something that they could get. Obviously, that was a big thing that I had to deal with as far as people thinking they were entitled to my ice cream just because they knew somebody that worked there. Uh, Actually, I have a funny story with that because this is how bad teenagers can be at times. And it was mainly teenagers that did this. I'm not saying that I didn't get this from other people. But one of the things that I've shared in the past is that I had a truck wrap. So my truck was wrapped all full of ice cream and all Baskin Robbins and everything. And every time I went through a drive through at a fast food place, the kid behind the at the window would almost always say that they would hook me up with free food if I would give them some ice cream. And I would always tell them that it wasn't their food to give away for free. And I laughed because their next answer was, oh, no, 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 I, I get food on my breaks. I'll give you my break food. And I'm like, nah, I appreciate it. But nah, I, I don't do that. And once again, it's still not your food to give away. So I would try to do a little teaching moment at the same time through humor. And most of the time I didn't get any attitude. But it told me right away that if they were willing to, and they were dead serious, uh, it told me that more than likely this person has probably been giving away food to their friends all along. Now, in most cases, 
businesses have a certain amount of uh, loss that they've set aside for these kids giving away stuff. And I don't know why I went down this path instead of answering straight from the question, but it just really made me start thinking that that is a, unfortunately, with any body, not just teenagers, loss of your product is always going to be there. So it really comes down to rules and expectations, which kind of brings me back to the original question of hiring teenagers. So I'll I'll keep this in mind because I'm going to come back to this. Yeah, Here's the thing. When you hire kids, you have to accept the fact that that's what you're hiring. And if you go into it thinking that you're going to get a very mature group of individuals, the odds are you're going to set yourself up for disappointment. Each generation has a different way they look at work. You know, if you go back, you know, and I'm not trying to say go back in time and wish everybody, but if you're thinking that you're going to get out of today's kids, the same thing that came out of the kids in the fifties, you're wrong. It's a totally different time, totally different set of expectations, totally different um, respect level and everything else. Kids are going to be kids. Kids are going to want to interact with their friends. They're going to want to talk to them and everything else. So it's really important that when it comes to teenagers, that you follow the same rules that you would for anybody else. When I was looking for the kids to work for me, I knew that I had to be very selective at who I took. You know, I wasn't trying to get the first kid that walked through the door and hire them. Most of the kids that I hired, they had to come back to my store multiple times. And I've talked about, for example, I had one kid that came in every single week for almost a year before I ended up hiring him. And part of my goal was every time he left me, I left him with something else to try to work on. And you know what? Eventually I hired him. I had another kid that would come in every single week also looking for a job. He probably took six months before I hired him. I had another kid that came in, and I think I mentioned this on one of the past podcasts. You know what? His his hat was on backwards. His pants were hanging down. And I could tell at first I wasn't going to even take him seriously. And then just something about him, a look that he had, told me that he was being dead serious, that he needed to be able to work to help his family. And I called him back over and I said, look, are you, are you serious about wanting a job? And he said, yeah. And I said, then I, can I give you some advice? You need to turn, take your hat off, pull your pants up and walk into these places like you mean business and that they're going to hire someone who's going to do a great job for them. And you know, I give that great credit. By the time he got to my door, he took his hat off, pulled his pants up, and just, you know, shrugged his shoulders back and he walked out the door. I never did see him again, but I'd like to think that in that moment, because he did, um, and he did it not in a ticked off way, but in a way of which, hey, I'm going into the next building. What can I do to change? And, and you know, maybe that helped him out. Uh, but so with teenagers, part of it is an education process as they come in, be picky, see who makes the changes that they need to do before you ever do it. The biggest thing that you can do when it comes to teenagers uh, that are driving you batty is expectations. Do they have clear expectations of what it is that they're supposed to be doing? Now, here's what's important. A lot of times we assume they know what they need to do. You have to remind them over and over what the expectations are. So for example, I told my kids that, look, when you're here, I'm paying you. And when I'm paying you, you're making a choice to either work for money or not work for money. And here's what I expect when you are here and I'm paying you money. I expect my lobby to be clean. I expect my ice cream to be clean. I expect my store to be clean. I expect, you know, and then I went through a list of other duties that they had to do. And I made sure that they understood that when they were on the clock, these are the expectations. Now, if all of that was done, then we could talk about other things that they could do. But it was real important that they knew that if I ever caught them and they weren't doing one of the things that needed to get done, we were going to have a more serious conversation. So part of it was I told them that every single week I was like a broken record, even the ones that were with me for two or three years. And what was funny is they would even recite it to me before I would even finish. So I would say, look, so why are we on our phone? Is there something? And I would look at the lobby and I'm like, Is there something that I'm seeing that's missing that needs to get done? So part of it is that expectations, being very clear about it. And the other thing is you can't fight all of it. Uh, They're going to look on their phone. You know, even the schools have given up in most cases, kids have their phones. So just have clear rules around their phones that if their phones are on them, you better not see them 
on their phones when there's work to be done. You better not see them on their phone when there's customers in your store. You know, that those are the kind of rules, for example, that I set up is that if I saw their phone in their hand and they were on their phone when I had customers in the building, I was not going to be a happy camper. And so it really was about setting the rules around it because I couldn't stop it, but I could set rules around it. And was it perfect? No. Did it help out dramatically? Yes. Because here's the thing. Anytime that you start telling people to stick it in, stick their phone in a locker or they can't have it, they're going to be sneaking away to go do it. So what's worse, them standing in front of your customers with their phone or them sneaking away to go look at their phones and now they're not even in your store, they're off in the back somewhere. So it, it's, you know, a couple of them, I would love to bust them. They would go in the walk-in freezer. And I noticed they were in there a little longer than what the task was that they needed. So I would just go up there and open the door really quick and totally bust them. And I, you know, it would make a point that I know what they were doing. I knew what they were doing and that it needed to stop. You know, it's, it really, you know, unfortunately, the, the person who asked the question, uh, his name is Art. Art, listen, I, I know it sucks. Having kids is horrible. But the biggest thing that you can do is set those expectations and hold them accountable to it. But you've also got to make it fun. Because here's the thing, if you are nothing but a hard ass with teenagers, they're going to start turning against you. Think about parents. When we're a parent and our kids just see us as that authoritative figure coming down on them, they're going to rebel backwards. So you, it's kind of a fine line of having fun with them when you bust them and let them know that those aren't the expectations. The other thing that I would do all of the time is I was really big on saying, I'm not a babysitter, because that's why I was laughing earlier is when I said, when you said that you felt like a babysitter, you are a babysitter. But here's the thing, you don't have to be. And I was always telling them, look, I'm not your babysitter. I didn't like babysitting when I was a teenager, and I sure the heck don't like babysitting it as an adult. So we have one of two choices. Either you can be a kid that needs to be babysat, in which case I do not need you, or you can be an adult and I can help you become a better employee and I can help groom you for your future. Because that's how I always approached it with these teenagers. I was constantly telling them that I knew they weren't going to work for me forever, but it was my job to get them ready for that next big job that they would graduate to. And I had to help them break the teenage kid mentality and get into the worker bee mentality. But um, the and I was constant with that message. I was grooming them for something. And two, I'm not a babysitter. And they knew that if I had to say the words, I'm not a babysitter, that they had crossed over. Um, so, but I also had fun with them. You know what? I, I, if their friends came in, I just let them know that, uh, you know, their, your friends aren't allowed in. You know, if they're paying customers and they come in, fine. But you're not here to socialize. You're not here to talk. Now, when I wasn't in the building, did they do it? Probably. But I would also do spot checks just to make sure that everything was good. Because my store before I bought it was famous for giving away ice cream. They would give away ice cream all day long before I bought it. And I would be in the store before I bought it and I'd watch them do it. And matter of fact, when I bought the store, the first employees to go were the ones that I knew were giving away ice cream to their friends. And I told them flat out saying, look, I can't hire you because I can't trust you. I've been in this this uh, lobby and I've watched you give away ice cream to your friends. And therefore, unfortunately, I will not be hiring you for my company. Because technically when you buy uh, a business, they have to get terminated by their old employer and then hired by the new. So I would let people know. So I made it very clear because the people that did come aboard knew the reason that I didn't hire the other ones was due to the fact that I couldn't trust them. Um, it, and so a lot of it is just talking to them. The, the mistake you don't want to make is when you guys have teenage kids is do not treat them like kids. You've got to treat them like adults and you need to tell them you're going to treat them like adults because when you treat them like teenagers and you, they're, they're going to go into what the mode is that they have at home. They're going to go into teenager mode and they're going to start acting like a teenager. So you really want to treat them like adults and how you would anybody else. So for example, if you have a 17 year old kid working for you, you need to hold them to the same standards of the 35-year-old person that you hire or the 65-year-old person. You need to talk to them the same way. You need, you're need you not doing them any good to treat them like kids. You need to understand their thought process, why they act the way they do, but that doesn't mean you need to treat them like they're your teenagers. Uh, it's very difficult. 
You know what? You need to listen to them. And I'm going to tell you, when you have teenagers, you're going to have teenage drama with it. Uh, I had people, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, they were in trouble with this. <laughs> you're going to get all that teenage drama that's going to come in. So you're going to also be a coach. You will be a mom or a dad to these kids. But there's a difference between being a mom and a dad to them with some of their problems and helping them out because you have that time and energy and investment in them. But you need to make sure you draw the line for how you're going to treat them from a work standpoint and expectations and make sure that they know there's a difference there. And by the way, the teenage drama is no different. You know what? Like I said, when I worked for Home Depot, if I just take the the front end people, all the cashiers, you know, we would have 40, 50 cashiers. And do you know how much drama went on on a daily basis on those front ends? It was ridiculous. I'd rather deal with the teenage drama than the adult drama because the adults knew better some of the junk they would get into and the people they were sleeping with. And then they get mad because somebody would get mad. You're an adult. You know better. You're freaking 25, 35 years old. At least a 17 year old, I can understand it a little bit more. So, uh, you know, the drama, it's going to be there no matter who you hire. It's just going to be a little different type of drama. And sometimes you're going to hold back laughter because it really reminds you of what was important back then compared to what is important today. And you have to cut them some slack. They don't have the life experiences that you have now. And you were once one of them. And that's kind of how you want to do it is how would you want someone to treat you when you were their age and how would you groom them? So I, this is kind of a long answer to this problem. But, uh, you know, I, I guess the biggest thing that I want to try to get across is you want to prepare these kids for their next job. They're not going to be with you forever. And if they're going to be with you for six months, a year, three years, five years, try to have that conversation with them that your goal is for them not to bounce from fast food to fast food or from basic job to basic job. I told every single one of my kids that when they left me, my goal was they elevated up, that they got a promotion and they got a job in a bigger place, that they took on a lot more responsibility, that they made a lot more money. Everything that we did was meant to be that they would grow, that I was setting them into something bigger and better. And you know what? I would say that for probably 75% of them, that was exactly the case. And the others that left were because their family moved or something happened with school, um, whatever the case may be. But you've got to have it in your mind a little differently than the way you have it today. You're right. You're not a babysitter. And you need to tell them you have no desire to be their babysitter. And that's going to help you out dramatically. Uh, So just set those rules, set the expectations, be realistic about it, especially when it comes to that phone. You're not going to get them off of the phone. So your best bet is to find the rules around them using the phone when they can and cannot. And definitely they need to know exactly what it is that they need to be accomplishing on a regular basis. So that way when they're caught using their phone and these other things aren't done, you can hold them accountable to that. So I hope this advice helps everybody. Before you go, I know you guys bust your butt and it can be a lonely gig at times, but it doesn't have to be. Just know I'm always here for you. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Hey, before you go, I just have one little favor. If you have a subject, a topic, a question that you would like have answered on the show or talked about, please shoot me a message over at Tammy at localsmallbusinesscoach.com. Once again, I want to hear from you. So shoot it over to me, Tammy at localsmallbusinesscoach.com.